Alright, what's the crack? Welcome back to Techniques in 10, a series where we take a look at the fundamentals of various painting techniques in 10 minutes or less. Today we're going to have a look at glazing. Glazing is essentially creating semi-transparent layers of paint that we can use to smooth transitions, tint colours or apply filters to our models. There are a number of different mediums that you can use to create your glazes, the most common being water, but we'll take a look at some of the others in the video today. Glazing is a slightly more advanced technique and does require some practice, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand the basics and you'll be ready to go. So with that being said, let's get a timer and let's get into it. Here are some of the mediums that we'll be using today. Let's take a quick look at each of them on the paper. From left to right, we have the gloss medium, the matte medium, the glaze medium, and the thinner medium. As you can see, the thinner medium is the least viscous of the mediums, followed by the glaze medium, and the gloss medium and matte medium are thicker. Now let's add some red into the mediums and look at what's happening. At the core, we are diluting the paint with more medium, and as a result, you get less pigment per milliliter, causing the paint to become more transparent. Depending which medium you use, it'll change the consistency, drying time, and finish of the paint. So it is best to try them all and pick whichever you're most comfortable with. Now let's compare to using water. You get a very similar result using water as you do with the mediums. So it is very common to see people using water. Now we know what we're trying to achieve Let's look at how we can apply this to our minis. When you're using glazes, it is important to wick away any excess moisture onto a paper towel, as this gives better control. We are pulling the brush in the direction where we want the pigment to collect. When you do your first pass, it will be very subtle, but that is exactly the result that you want. We are building opacity with multiple thin layers to achieve a shift in value. Now we go in for our second pass, again wicking off the excess moisture and pulling the brush in the direction where you want to emphasize the shadows. Using a brush with a larger belly is advantageous as this will allow you to cover more area before going back to your palette. It is easier to use the side of your brush in a swooping motion. Using a larger surface allows for more control and helps prevent paint from running. When glazing in your highlights, it is easier to use a thicker medium as it offers more control but still gives semi-transparent coverage. Remember, the mediums are just tools that allow you to create an effect, so use whatever you're most comfortable with. Again, we are pulling the paint towards where we want the majority of the pigment to be deposited.
I'm going back in with the shadow color. Again, you can see I'm wicking off the excess moisture onto the paper towel. And each time I apply the glaze, I'm covering a slightly smaller area because we want to build up the color using many semi-transparent layers of paint. To smooth out any subtle lines or steps between the glazes, we're going to take our highlight color and run that from the shadows into the highlights. This will help smooth out the transition and provide an even finish to the surface. And now just one more pass to really help smooth out those areas. And now you can see we have a nice smooth transition from our shadows into our highlights. Tinting or filtering is another great way to make use of glazes. As you can see, I've done a rough value sketch on the trim of the tabard using black and white. I will follow the same process as before, pulling the brush in the direction where I want most of the pigment to be deposited. As we continue, to build up the semi-transparent layers of paint, we start to build the intensity and the saturation of the color while preserving the underlying value sketch. We now have a subtle dark green tint over the value sketch, but this still allows for the underpainting and the texture to show through. You can continue to build this up until you're happy with the saturation. Just remember the more layers that you apply, the less visible the underpainting will become. Now let's take a look at some of the gotchas. Forgetting to wick away the excess moisture is the most common mistake and can result in too much glaze being applied to an area. The glaze will start to pull, similar to a wash, and create a visible step between the two colors. And it always happens at the edge of the glaze. These marks are often referred to as tide marks or coffee staining. If you catch this early, you may be able to wick away the excess glaze with a clean, damp brush. If not, you may have to reapply the base color. The second most common issue is working an area before it's dry. This will cause the glaze to rip and reveal the underlying color and produce unwanted texture. It can be difficult to fix these areas, so it is best to let your glaze dry fully or use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process.
and that covers the fundamentals of glazing. Hopefully you find this video useful. If you have any questions or comments or things you would like to see in the future, please drop them below in the comments. And until next time. Hopefully you find this useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe.